Okay, let's work out a solution to the agenda equation. This is an example 8.3.1. So um, this is the agenda equation. Now we are trying to find a series solution, which we have done that before. So uh, hopefully we'll, we'll get it done uh, faster this time. So now assume a form of y is this form j from zero to infinity coefficient e sub j and then x to the power j plus s. Okay. Now we need to get the uh, y prime, the derivative, and then second derivative, y double pi. Okay, and then y prime is this. The derivative becomes j plus s, and then j sub j x j plus s minus one. Okay, so um, yeah. we can continue that y double point. We have to from zero to infinity, so j plus s, and then j plus s minus one. Is j x to the j plus s minus two. Okay, so that's uh that's y double prime. All right, so we can now supposedly we can put these all these back to the equation, and then uh, found the relationship between all these uh, base of j and, and also solve the for the unknown in that s. Now, oh, let me put that in. So this is under here. Y pi is going to here, but there's an x multiplied by x. So actually, you need x times y pi. So x times y pi. That uh, basically just cancel this minus one. Back to minus one power. So that's uh, quite uh, convenient. Now for this. Y double pi, there are two terms. One is just y double pi itself, the other is multiplied by x squared. And for y double pi itself, the form is j plus s minus 2. So that's not quite the form that's the same as the other term. So uh, my usual way to do it is to shift the index so that all, all terms has, have, have the same form in the x, the power x. So what it means is to shift j plus s minus 2 to j, j plus s only. So it would be the same as the other one. So basically, now you shift it. So basically, the new j will be j plus 2, right? And then the old j is uh, the new j uh, so this is j plus s, j, j minus 2 becomes j, so the old j will be j plus 2, so that is um, j plus s plus 2, this becomes j plus s plus 1, and becomes j plus 2, j plus s. And then now the sum is sum over the new j. The new j start with minus two instead of zero. Right. So the first term is j minus two is we get a sub zero from the first term. Now that's y double prime that can go into this term, but then you still have another term j x squared times y double pi. So again, you need x squared times y double pi. Basically, that just cancels this uh, minus two that, uh, power. So now we have all we need because uh, this goes to here, this goes to here, this goes to here, this goes to here. So we have all, all of them, and all of them have the same power of x. So that convenient. Now uh, we substitute everything into here. The summation start from zero to infinity, so all terms have, have that. 
So you can write it down first. So, well, send up zinc and see it in infinity. And with this, this term going to here, which is, uh, so first, uh, all three, all these terms for points A sub J, this one, this one, and this one, for points A sub J, we can group them together. And the first one is X square, which is just this one. J plus S, which plus S minus one, and that's this one. And then the other one is this one, which is this one. Plus two times two plus S, this one. And then this one, we move them, move it to the left hand side with the minus number. Okay, so that is that. And all of them proportion to the H J. Okay, so that's uh, this, 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 this. And then finally, you have this term. Uh, which is a minus minus two minus two plus 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 two two plus 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 one the case of two plus two okay and all proportion in x to the three plus plus okay. Now, all, you take care of all the summation, but there's two extra terms uh, from j equals to minus two and j equals to minus one. Okay, well, j, and they all come from this term, which is this one, and with a minus sign, which is actually unimportant. So, uh, the first one is j is minus two, because uh, it's minus two because minus s. Um, S minus one times A sub zero. And this is J is minus two. Let's take S minus two. We got uh, J, J equals to minus two. And then the other one is J equals to minus one. Okay. And then J to the minus one, this becomes uh, S plus one. So minus one, so can you get S? And then uh, A sub one. J is minus one, this becomes one, and then it's either S minus one. Okay. Mm. That is the zero. All right, so now uh, this equation. So all the coefficients of uh, all the power of x zero. So so this curl, curly bracket zero, and then this is zero. This is zero. Okay. Now uh, to make this turn to zero, so you have uh, different choices. But one simple choice is uh, just set s to zero. So s to zero. So both terms are zero. Okay. And then, uh, then there are, once you choose that, then there are two possibility. One you know, is a sub zero equals zero, the other a sub one equals zero, and the other is non zero. And you can make both non zero, but then we, we're just combining the, the two solutions because uh, the, the rest of the equation, this bracket, uh, we set that to zero. The recurrence for relation is just. Uh, when you given j, then the next one will be j plus two. You always jump j in an integer of two. So, so you have a sub zero, then you have a sub two, a sub four. You get the uh, get the uh, all the even j. Then you have j equals to one. Then you get three and five. You get all the odd j. You set both the non-zero. Then you actually get two. Solution together, add up together, so that um, that is not wrong. But then you just um, mix into equation. So, but anyway, whatever you do, it uh, 
or you can do it one at a time. So you first is set the a's of one to zero, and then you start with a's of zero, and then the other is set a's of zero to zero, and you get a's of one, not zero. That you get the two solution that way. The textbook do it a little different. The textbook set a's of one to zero, and then choose uh, two solutions with s equals to zero or s equals to one. Um, that's actually exactly the same. You get exactly the same point, same solutions. And let's do it uh, this way to set S to zero. And then uh, either keeping A sub one zero or keeping A sub zero zero. Uh, set the other one non zero. Okay. And when S equals zero, this equation becomes a, uh, see, that is. Uh, you can write uh, different. You can write it like uh, uh, like like recur recurrence relation. So a j plus two that equals to this one divided by coefficient because this this is a minus sign. So this one you have a j plus zero and then j times j minus one and then plus two j. Minus lambda and this two j can combine to this one and change j minus one to j plus one because there's a j here. So you have a j times j plus one minus lambda and a sub j divided by here set s to zero. So you have j plus two and j plus one. Plus G, plus G, one. And J is from zero to infinity, so you see that the denominator always non-zero and actually always positive. So, uh, so that is good. That that uh, so you won't divide by zero. Okay, so uh, so that depends on uh, where you start. If you start from a sub zero, then you get a, a sub two. You put a sub two here, you get a sub four, and so on and so forth. So you get all the even j. You start with a sub one, you get a sub three, and then a sub three, you get a sub five, and so on. You get all the odd, uh, odd j terms. Okay, so, but they have the same recurrence formula. All right. Now, uh, the idea of a series solution is, uh, yeah, is useful if it's convergent. So then the next step is to test whether it's convergent. And the most basic test is the ratio test. So you want to test, uh, test the terms here, the, like the, because it's, this series is jumping every other j to like um, come combined with the j plus two term divided by x j term, but they, are, they multiply by x, so difference is x squared. So basically, you want a j plus two divided by a sub j and divided by x squared. And you want to the, the limit of the large j to j plus infinity. And you see that uh, when j goes to infinity, so this lambda is just a constant that becomes j square. The denominator also becomes j square, so they cancel. And so only we have x square. So, so if x square is, uh, is convergent, if x square is less than one, but then uh, becomes a uh, undetermined if uh, x squared equals to one. Okay, so and we usually want to find the solution for the uh, gender e equation within uh, x from minus one to one, so x squared can be one uh, at the boundary. So we want to see whether it's convergent or not. So basically, in that case, uh, you want to now it's set x square equals to one, but now you cannot use the ratio test. You need to use another test, and a, another test would be the 
uh, what you can do is the Gauss test here, uh, just com comparing this use of n to use of n plus one. So uh, basically now you, you're basically taking the inverse of that, but uh, this is use of n, this is, this uh, this term become use of n, this is use of n plus one, right? And so the n becomes uh, counting the number of terms because you're jumping j from every other term. So, uh, so it depends on whether j is uh, or even so j is equal to 2n for the even, uh, even j or 2n plus 1 for the odd, uh, for the odd term for the odd j and n is very zero. Infinity. Okay, so that will count uh, the, all the terms from n, integer n, and you want to com compare use of n divided by use of n plus one. Okay, so uh, and then you want to take the large n unit and go to infinity. Okay, and then uh, set to x gray equals to one. Right, so that ratio becomes just this the inverse of this ratio. Then, uh, so let's let's keep everything first. So J, let's let's use uh two n because uh but n is large, so two n plus one is just similar to this ten to two two n anyway. So this is two n plus two, two n plus one divided by two n times two n. Yes, was actually two n plus one, and then you have minus one there. Like that ratio becomes like that. But then uh, when n goes to infinity, this term is large. We can forget about this round there, and in that case, you can just this is two n plus one. This is two n plus one. You can cancel this with that, and now that becomes. 2n divided by 2n is 1, and then you have 2 divided by 2n becomes 1 into n. Okay, and that uh, according to the Gauss test, so this this numerator in this, uh, in the term 1 over n is what we call h parameter, h is 1 in this case, and h is 1 according to the test is divergent. So, uh, so you want h is greater than one, that becomes a uh, becomes a convergent. But the h equals to one, that actually is a divergent. All right. So it's divergent. All right, so, so this means the series version using this recurrence formula will valid only for x squares less than one. So it cannot apply for the boundary terms x squared equals to one to plus x plus or minus one. So that uh, if you have an application where you need the boundary, that would be a problem. So, so unless you only work for x squared less than one, the interior problem. Then uh, the series with arbitrary lambda is not good. And so uh, the one way to make it valid is uh, when this series truncate. And one way to mix this series truncate is when the numerator becomes zero at, at some point, right? And j is an integer, so j start with zero, one, two, three, and so on, depends on odd and even, right? So uh, one way to make this see this the numerator zero is lambda is an integer L times the next integer L is one. Because uh, when j equals to L, this becomes L plus one, then uh, that that term will be zero. So this, so J equal L, this 
eight, the alpha is two will be zero because the, this vector is zero. And then all the rest uh, of the term will be zero because you keep uh, putting, say, like alpha is two in here, the so alpha is four is zero, alpha is six is zero. Uh, so the series truncate and the solution becomes not the infinity, but, uh, but just a finite term, to, a, a polynomial with finite number of terms. So that is called uh, the gender polynomial. And so um, that's the way to derive the series form of the Legenda polynomial. So you can actually, if you want, you can act, work out all the power of the Legenda polynomial this way, uh, except that uh, there's a known coefficient in front. So that uh, you should choose to, by convention, uh, what the Legenda polynomials are. Defined usually is defined when the Matenda polynomial is one at x equals to one, but that, that uh, we'll talk about that later. But uh, uh, that's how you derive the series solution.